There's a lot of important questions in One Piece. Like what happened in the Void Century? What is the One Piece? And who is Soja King? So in this video, I'll be answering a question we've all been thinking about. Which One Piece race is the most breedable? In total, we have 12 races. So I'm going to decide the winner using a tournament style bracket, which I have named Munch Madness. Okay, first up, we have Minx versus Merfolk. Two top tier races. So let's go over Minx first. They got a lot going for them. The pros are they have a lot of variety depending on the species. Also, you know that they're crazy in bed and they duck like an animal. Lastly, they have Electro, which could give you that extra stimulation. Only cons are, depending on the animal, the mink osi may be more hairy than you'd like. For merfolk, they obviously have a lot of pros as well. They look like a human from the top up, so it feels less illegal. Also, you know the fish osi is always going to be wet, so you can slip and slide anytime. Cons are, the fish osi may smell more fishy than you'd like. Both really good pick, but I'd have to give it to the minks. The Electro stimulation gives them the edge and helps me edge. All right, round two, we have giants versus dwarves. I don't want to hear any comments about the size difference. I'm assuming you can grow taller or shrink down in order to smash. For the giants, we've seen a good number of them throughout the series and they've all been good looking. Well, most of them. Some of them do have weird facial structures, but that's to be expected when you're built to the size of a mountain. The giants also low key give me Viking vibes and we know that they pulled. For the Tantadas, it's hard to rate them on this because the full grown ones still have the face of a kid. It's like a 30 year old guy with an 18 year old girlfriend. Not illegal, but definitely not a good look. Conversely, the faces of the Tontadas are all a good look. I don't remember seeing a single ugly Tontada and there's some baddies too. Also, they have long noses and all characters with long noses are instantly hotter. The only people who say size doesn't matter is your girlfriend when you ask her how big you are. In the manga, we're coming to Elbaf soon. And if we see some giant baddies, I might be coming soon. Giants clear. Next, we have two similar looking races, Skypeans versus Lunarians. For Skypeans, I don't think their wings give them anything special in terms of breedability, but the halo on their head could be used if you're big enough. They may look innocent, but I'm willing to bet they've created a vibrating dial, so they get a point for kinkiness too. For Lunarians, there's a lot more you can work with. The flames would give you a nice fireplace view when you're hitting it from the back. The white hair is also a W. It's a universal anime fact that all white hair characters are the hottest. Lunarians are also naturally kinky because of their durability and high pain tolerance. I mean, look at King's BDSM fits during Wano. The world government doesn't really care about Skypeans, but they needed to exterminate Lunarians. Their light skin riz, bleached hair, and face tats would have had them breeding like rats. Lunarians take the W. Oni versus Fishman. Okay, this is where things get a little weird. I say that as if the whole video has not been. When I say Oni, a lot of you are probably thinking about Kaido or Yamato, but those are only half Oni. Full Onis look like oars. Yeah, appearance wise, they don't have a lot going for them, but they do have a lot of loyalty. Like when oars came to save Ace, you're never gonna have to question them cheating on you. And loyalty is hot. And oars Jr. was hot before wearing the hat. Therefore, Onis are as hot as Ace. Okay, moving on to Fishman. It's getting harder to hear y'all out on why fishmen are breedable. I mean, we all know the girl who tried a little merfolk D for fun. She liked it a little bit more than she thought, so she moved on to fishman meat. Two years later, she's getting trains run on her by the sea beast. Now, her nickname is the all blue because she got with every fish in the sea. Anyways, fishmen are not all bad though. They do have some breedable qualities. You know that that fishman karate has given them some crazy grippiness. Their body is also naturally lubricated and the gills give you multiple points of entry. Just like Luffy had a hard time dealing with Arlong, I'm gonna be hard all the time if I see a fish baddie with extra long lips. Fishmans, take this. All right, semi-finals of the bracket. We have Minx and Giants. Both of these races are strong and are natural fighters, but the difference is one of them knows when to stop play fighting. If Minx show affection by rubbing against your cheek, Giants show affection by beating your cheeks black and blue. As you can see, if you ask them to beat your meat, they would take that statement very differently. It's a full moon today, so the minks are in so long, and that's making me so long. Minks take this. Okay, Lunarians versus Fishmen. These two could not be more different. Water versus fire. One's black and the others are multicolored. Lunarians went through harsh prejudice and Fishmen... You, you know what? Maybe, maybe they're not that different. Just like how Fishmen are the evolution of humans, Lunarians are the evolution of Fishmen. Stronger, taller, more tattoos, and cooler abilities. Unless it's closing time at the chum bucket, the girl is always going to pick the warm embrace of a Lunarian over the cold, wet hands of a fishman. Lunarians fillet, grill, and eat the fishman this round. It's time for the final. 
or minks versus lunarians? This is a hard choice, but after extensive online research, I've come to a conclusion. Everything I said about the Lunarians can be replicated by the Minks. White hair in their Sulong form, they do have Electro instead of Flame attacks, and I'm sure that there are some Minks that can fly. So with that, it's hard to put one of these races over the other based on their abilities. But I did look it up and there are about 2 million furries worldwide, which puts the Minks on top and makes Lunarians the power bottom. Based on that, I think we'd all have to agree that Carrot is getting the Carrot. And with that, I'm happy to announce Minx as the winner, and I'm ashamed to announce that I made this video. I know I missed a few races, so comments the ones that I forgot, and if there's enough, I'll make a part two. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to a therapist and seek help immediately.